This video is going to be all about carbs. Another word for carbs is sugar or saccharide. That's what the word saccharide means. The most basic of sugars, just having one molecule of it or monosaccharide. These are going to be your glucose, your galactose, your fructose. Now you can chain saccharides together. You can have two saccharides and link them together. We call those disaccharides. So if you chain glucose with another glucose, you get maltose. You chain glucose with a galactose, you get lactose. Glucose with a fructose gives you sucrose. So these are going to be your disaccharides. And can you chain more than two? Yeah, you can chain as much as you want. In fact, that's how we store excess sugars. We chain them, save space. We call that glycogen. That's going to be on a different topic. We'll talk about that a little later. But these are going to be your monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Now, when you ingest carbohydrates, your body will break it down and then transport it where it needs to be transported. There's two main transporters for sugars. Your first main group of transporters are going to be your sodium dependent glucose co-transporters, better known as SGLT. Okay, so your SGLTs, these are active, which means they need sodium, potassium, ATP, ACE pumps to power them. There are two main subtypes, SGLT1, found in your gut, enterocytes, and found in your renal proxo, proximal convoluted tubule. SGL2, SGLT2, found mainly in your renal PCT. And this one is the big one. This one is what's responsible for most of your sugar reabsorption in your PCT. So about 90% of the sugar that gets reabsorbed is due to SGLT2. So that's your first group. That's your main group. Your second group is going to be your glucose transporters, also known as GLUT. Now GLUT is different from the first class because it is facilitated, meaning it doesn't need energy, it doesn't need ATP, it's just the gradient. It depends on the gradient. It flows down that gradient and because it flows down a gradient, it is bi-directional. Now there are dozens of different glute transporters. Fortunately, you only need to know the first five. Let me clear the board. Glute one. This is found in your RBCs and your blood brain barrier. Glute 2. This is going to be found in your GIT and also your GIT organs like your liver, your pancreas. Glute 3. This is going to be your neurons. Glute 4 is going to be found in your adipocytes, so your fat, and your muscles. And then finally, Glute 5, the main importance is that it carries fructose. Widely distributed, but it's one of the few that carries fructose. That's the main part. 
Now there's some clinical significance to these. For example, if you have a GLUT1 deficiency, you're gonna lack sugar in your blood-brain barrier. You're gonna have low sugar in your brain, CSF. Patients that have this, they have refractory seizures. They have retardation. And you treat this by having low glucose diet because you can't take it up. Instead, you use alternative fields like high fat, high protein diets. GLUT2 deficiency. This is important, especially in your liver. Recall that GLUT is bidirectional. So in GLUT2 deficiency, you can take it up, make glycogen, but you can't break it and release it. So this is basically a glycogen storage disorder. So you're gonna have hepatomegaly, you're gonna have a big liver, and you're also gonna have fasting hypoglycemia because you can't break down that glycogen and release it. You can only take it up. That does it for the transport of glucose. We're kind of beating around the bush. Now we're gonna really dive into the biochemistry of it. We're gonna talk about breaking it down chemically, breaking glucose down chemically into its building block. That's called glycolysis. That'll be in our next video. See you then.